Hey, what's up everybody? Gareth Folder here with FCP Euro. And today I'm gonna be talking to you about the N52 family of engines. That does include the first gen N52 as well as the second gen N52N and N51 Sulev engine. And right now here on the table, we have a bunch of parts um, that are potential problems on these engines. But we're gonna talk about some of the finer details of you know, these types of failures, these types of problems these engines have. So over here on the left-hand side of the table, we have the second generation version of the engine, the entire valve cover assembly. And we also have the first generation uh, valve cover gasket or the components that would be required for doing a valve cover gasket. The common theme on these engines is oil leaks. If you already own a BMW, you've probably already dealt with oil leaks. If you don't own a BMW, uh, oil leaks are a rite of passage, if you would. Uh, this engine is no different. Um, Basically, one of the most common oil leaks you're ever gonna get is a valve cover gasket leak. This valve cover gasket right here, this is for the magnesium valve cover version of the N52, so it's basically the Gen 1 version of this engine. Uh, what is different between that and this is the gasket on this valve cover is straight rubber. Uh, while this is more of a composite, it's also worth noting that the magnesium valve cover version of the engine is using aluminum one-time use torque to yield bolts. When you're doing a valve cover gasket on a gen one version of this engine i'm not saying that's guaranteed that some of those aluminum bolts are going to snap off but some of them do upon removal fortunately they're not torqued very tight so if the head of the bolt does snap off you could still easily get them out uh, but for this version of the engine you're going to have to buy the valve cover gasket bolts along with the valve cover gasket if you have the second generation version of this engine with the plastic valve cover um, you have two options you can just order the valve cover gasket parts separately which includes the Valvetronic uh, actuator seal and the Valvetronic sensor seal. Or what some people are doing these days is buying the entire valve cover assembly itself because one of the primary dif differences between the early version of this engine and the later version is they integrated the oil separator into the valve cover on these engines. So this is a potential failure item. Some people, when they go to deal with the eventual valve cover leak you're gonna get, they just replace the entire valve cover just to remove all possibilities from the table. Another common oil leak is this gasket right here, which is for the Valvetronic motor or a Valvetronic actuator. This bigger version is used on the plastic valve cover. This thin version is used on the magnesium valve cover. These are prone to leaking oil. Uh, what's typically going to happen, there's a recessed area here in the valve cover. When this event inevitably starts to leak, oil will literally pool inside of the valve cover until it starts to fill up. And what will sometimes happen is you'll have oil actually leaking down this way over the top of the valve cover. It is always this seal right here. The fortunate part is this seal is serviceable. Just need to remove the Valtronic motor, pull this out, remove the gasket, replace the gasket, put it back together. Uh, it doesn't involve removing the entire valve cover. So a little bit easier, but still kind of involved. And the cleanup is also something you have to deal with as well. So also going along with the uh, theme of oil leaks, oil pan gaskets. These are prone to leak over time. Uh, basically what happens on them, regardless of whether it's automatic or manual, uh, you have this soft rubber material on the outside. This is actually a Viton material or Viton style material. This stuff hardens almost rock hard and oil inevitably leaks past this uh, gasket and it just makes a mess underneath the car. Uh, one thing to note on the N52 engines is it's a magnesium aluminum engine block, which means you can't use traditional steel bolts or thread steel bolts into the block because what'll happen is galvanic corrosion, magnesium plus steel, they don't get along. So every single bolt that threads into the engine is going to be an aluminum torque to yield fastener. And that means any one of these bolts, if you remove it, you're gonna have to replace it. The most common oil leak on all, and this is universal. This right here is the oil filter housing gasket. Since it's on top of the engine located on the cylinder head, it is a gravity problem here. Obviously being the oil filter housing, there's a lot of oil that's stored there along with the oil filter. Uh, if this is leaking, oil is gonna leak down the side of the engine, down the front of the timing cover, 
and if the problem is severe enough, it could potentially cause the serpentine belt to slip off the harmonic balancer. And then if you're unfortunate enough, uh, basically the serpentine belt will be consumed by the engine through the front crankshaft seal, which is this guy here. And then you end up with shards of serpentine belt inside of the engine. So the oil filter housing gasket leak out of all of these that I've just talked about is the one that you really wanna be aware of and you wanna take care of as soon as you find it. And the reason why the serpentine belt could be consumed by the engine is because of the design of the harmonic balancer. The crankshaft pulley's on the backside while the harmonic balancer is on the front. So there's nowhere for that serpentine belt to go, but between the harmonic balancer and the engine block, it just literally gets compressed and this crankshaft seal is not going to withstand that pressure. Now, if that catastrophic failure were to happen, you're gonna have to clean all of those shards out, which means you're gonna have to replace the front crankshaft seal because it's been damaged. One thing to note about these crankshaft seals is they are very difficult to remove and they're also very difficult to install. We have this toolkit, which is specifically designed for removal of that crankshaft seal as well as installation. Uh, so you're gonna want the toolkit to do this job. I really don't know any other way you'd be able to do it or get around it. Another thing to note about this crankshaft seal is that it has recessed edges on the corners here. Um, this is because these engines use a modern engine bed plate design, and that's a, a way of saying that the crankshaft itself is physically between a lower portion of the engine block and an upper portion of the engine block, and it's basically bolted together. Uh, from the factory, when the engines are assembled, uh, there's two injection ports on the side of the engine block where sealant is injected into so that you, you know both of those halves could be sealed together. Uh, when the sealant is injected into the engine, additional sealant actually sneaks out the front past this seal. When you remove this crankshaft seal, you do physically remove some of that sealant. So when you put a new crankshaft seal in, you have to inject uh, new sealant, which is this stuff right here. You cannot and you should not use anything other uh, but this special Loctite sealant. Earlier in this video, you probably heard me mention uh, Valtronic a lot. Well, Valtronic is a variable valve lift system used on the intake side of the engine. Uh, and basically it allows for better running characteristics of the engine versus a normal throttle body. Let's talk about some of the downfalls of Valtronic on these engines. There's really two components to it outside of the mechanical components, it's really the control components you need to worry about. So this right here is the Valtronic actuator. You can see it has this worm drive on the end. This actually goes on the Valtronic um, eccentric shaft and it controls the position of the Valtronic shaft, which therefore controls the uh, intake valve lift. These motors do fail. It's fairly robust, so it's not a common failure, but um, when this fails, you might notice some rough running conditions. You'll obviously have a check engine light. Uh, there will be fault codes associated with this, but um, you know this, along with the gaskets that seal it, um, these things get pretty oily over time. Uh, so when you're dealing with this problem, you know, always make sure you buy a new uh, gasket because you're going to have to replace this gasket when you reinstall it. Another common source of problems for Valvetronic is this little uh, sensor right here. This is physically located inside the engine and it monitors the position of the eccentric shaft for the Valtronic system. If this sensor fails, which it most likely will at some point, uh, the Valtronic system simply won't operate. You'll have check engine light, some rough running conditions, codes associated with this failure, includes the encapsulated bolts, um, very difficult to actually torque these bolts to the factory spec. What you really need is a crow's foot to do that because um, there's really no room inside of there to, uh, to just put a normal socket on there. You have to use an open-ended wrench, therefore use a crow's foot or a torque adapter on a torque wrench in order to get these torqued to the correct spec. The worst thing that can happen is one of these falling off. And also again, the seal on top of the valve cover, which is this right here, you're gonna have to replace that as well because that prevents oil from literally coming up outside of the engine. So next up, I'm gonna talk about Vanos, which is BMW's variable cam timing system. Uh, the N52 engine received a modernized version of this system, uh, where basically the cam gears are adjustable and they're adjusted with oil pressure. So you have a couple different things happening here. First of all, you have your camshaft position sensor, which is this one right here. These typically go open circuit and fail. They're actually pretty easy to diagnose. Um, they're both located in the front timing cover of the engine. There's one camshaft sensor per camshaft. 
one sensor fails, Vano simply won't operate. You'll have a check engine light, rough running conditions, bunch of codes associated with the failure of this sensor. Um, so this right here can actually prevent the Vano system from functioning at the most basic level. Uh, some more complicated potential failures are failure of the Vano solenoid. Again, this is actually located in the front timing cover. And they're actually very, uh, both along with the cam sensor and both of the Vano solenoids. Once again, one solenoid, one sensor per uh, camshaft. Uh, these solenoids are fairly robust. The solenoid itself can physically fail. Uh, what also happens sometimes is due to lack of oil changes or uh, low quality oil being used, uh, these solenoids can actually become clogged and therefore not provide the adequate pressure to the cylinder head in order for the Vano system to function properly. Another very common fault, again, because the engine needs oil pressure uh, for the Vano system to function, you have two of these non-return valves in the cylinder head. This actually maintains oil pressure or oil volume into the cylinder head. Uh, these physically thread into the side. They have a little filter on the inside. Um, basically, if this check valve were to be stuck open, it's going to be constantly relieving oil pressure from the cylinder head and you might have some Vano's actuation fluctuation problems where the cam gear position is, is not where it's expected to be. Um, or if you do a cold start on the engine, it, you know, on the cold start, the performance or the range is not where it's expected to be. So these are a common issue on the engine. Um, if you have one of those problems, remove the check valve make sure that the check valve could physically move, make sure it's not clogged up. So this is another thing that you can check for. The worst possible scenario within the Vano system itself is either a cam gear failure, which is gonna involve retiming the entire engine, or even at the most simple level, you have this rector ring, which sits on the camshaft bearing ledge and seals the camshaft and the Vano system. Uh, so if this ring is destroyed or worn down, it could be letting oil pressure sneak by, which will cause the Vano system not to function properly. And these are actually a fairly common failure item, especially on vehicles that have not received proper oil maintenance. Another thing to note is the camshaft bolt. Uh, this bolt holds the uh, Vano's hub to the camshaft. Uh, that is not a keyed connection. There's no keyway. There's you know, Woodruff key, there's basically no mechanical connection between the two outside of this bolt. This bolt is currently a recall from BMW for certain models, but what's been known to happen over time is these bolts fatigue, they break, and basically bad things happen from there. This is the updated bolt. It's a class 12.9 fastener, it's torqued to yield. Your vehicle may be part of the recall, so it is always worth checking to make sure that this is something that can be done for you at no cost out of pocket. So uh, we talked a little bit about the crankcase ventilation system uh, in regards to it being part of the second generation, um, you know, internally into the valve cover. Some of these crankcase ventilation systems have issues with condensation. You get this really nasty looking mayonnaise type of goo that develops in, you know, into the crankcase ventilation system. So what BMW did on these engines is they have this angle connector that goes to the intake manifold. You notice a little electrical connector here. Uh, well, this is actually a heating element uh, for this angle connector and it helps cut down on the condensation. Well, currently this is a recall item uh, nationally in the United States. I don't know about globally, uh, but what has been known to happen on these or what the potential is, is that as the resistance of the heater goes down and the current remains the same, well, that is a potential risk for fire uh, to develop in the engine bay. Uh, so if this has not been replaced recently or uh, if you're unaware of this problem, my recommendation would be call your local dealer, see if your vehicle is part of the recall, get it replaced for free. If it's not part of the recall, do it yourself. You know, I just talked about Valvetronic and Vanos. Uh, we're currently working on a video uh, and some animations to help further explain on how the whole system works. Uh, so instead of going into great detail in this video, uh, we're gonna have another video coming out that explains this generation of Valvetronic and Vano systems and how they function. So be on the lookout for that. Last and mostly least, although there's some other finer points we could talk about, is the cooling system. Uh, the Achilles heel on this engine uh, is going to be the water pump. It's an electric water pump. Uh, basically, it looks like a little turbocharger. Uh, but uh, this is physically bolted to the side of the engine block, and uh, it, it is an external water pump. So there is no serpentine belt or 
system that is using to drive this. It's all electric power. Uh, the one unique thing about this system is um, it has different modes of operation. So uh, BMW looking to achieve maximum efficiency, uh, this water pump can actually change the tolerances of the engine uh, by basically cooling cycles. So if the engine is running cooler, for example, the tolerance is a little bit tighter, you get a little bit more power. If the engine's running hotter, the tolerance is open up and the engine's a little bit looser and you get a little bit more fuel economy. That is all controlled through this water pump and through the thermostat. And all of that is controlled by a CAN system. It's BMW calls it bit serial data, BSD. Uh, but basically the engine computer, looking at sensors and monitors from the engine, tells this water pump, hey, I want you to operate this fast. The internal control unit inside this water pump says, okay, spins up the water pump and you know all of this happens seamlessly. The most common failure on these water pumps is internal. It's gonna be the control unit, which is not serviceable, so you're gonna be replacing the entire water pump. Generally speaking, this is a 60 to 75,000 mile thing you're gonna be doing. Um, while you're in there, you're also gonna replace the thermostat, which is physically attached to the water pump itself. Uh, it actually mounts more or less in position above the water pump. Uh, this is a failure item to a degree, but not nearly as common as a water pump. But the fact of the matter is because of the location, just do both of them at the same time. And when you do that, make sure you use the proper antifreeze. It doesn't have to be necessarily a genuine BMW, uh, but you wanna make sure it's a G48 compatible antifreeze. Don't put anything else inside the engine. You know, you're gonna stack the deck in your favor and not running into problems later on. Now you may notice I didn't have smaller items on here like filters or spark plugs, ignition coils and things like that. Well, we're gonna do a, a smaller video talking about general maintenance of the engines and, you know, as a whole. Um, this is really more for problems associated with the engine, things that are outside of the normal scope of maintenance and things that you need to be aware of. So if you're worried about that stuff, we're also gonna do a video explaining those other details in terms of general maintenance. So also be on the lookout for that. Even though this all seems very overwhelming, as a whole, the N52 family of engines is actually very, very reliable, and it's a relatively low maintenance engine compared to some of the turbocharged variants that came around the same time. Uh, it's a really great engine, super reliable, super smooth, really decent power for what it is. Uh, so really hope you learned some of this video. If you have any questions or comments or concerns or any experience of your own, go ahead and leave it in the comment box below. We'll be happy to get back to you or see some of your stories. Go ahead and hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel because like I said, we have a bunch more videos coming out about this engine and some DIY surroundings, and you probably gonna wanna stay tuned for that. So hit that subscribe button and the bell button so you get a notification. Other than that, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, we'll see you for the next one. Later.